Hello everyone, so uh, today we're going to be talking about primary tumours of the heart. And although these are rare, and most tumours of the heart are secondary and have actually come from uh, a metastasis, they are frequently asked in board questions, and they have a lot of clinical relevance. So the three main types of primary cardiac tumours is the myxoma, the rhabdomyoma, and the fibroma. The myxoma is the most common cardiac primary tumour and is most often seen in adults. And the rhabdomyoma is the second most common, but it is the most common in infants and young adults. As I've said before, most uh, tumours of the heart are metastatic tumours and are secondary. However, I'm just going to be discussing the primary tumours in this recording. So as I said, we're going to start off with the most common primary tumour, which is the myxoma. So a myxoma is a benign tumour of myxoid tissue. And it's often described as being a mucus-like or gelatinous-like tumour. And it usually grows within the left atrium. In fact, 80% of the time it's found in the left atrium. And it quite frequently forms this pedunculated mass. So when cardiologists are performing an echocardiogram, they can see this little pedunculated mass flopping around inside the left atrium. Macroscopically, as we've said already, it is smooth, lobulated, gelatinous, most commonly mobile and pedunculated. And its positioning specifically in the left atrium is normally very close to the foramen ovale. Microscopically, what's actually inside this tumour is mesochyme, so this primitive mesochymic tissue, uh, thrombus, uh, mucopolysaccharides, and also some endothelium as well. And it's the mucopolysaccharide component which actually makes it sort of this gelatinous consistency. Myxomas are also described as having lipidic cells, which are these spindle slash stellate cells with a very eosinophilic cytoplasm and with a round inconspicuous nucleus. The clinical presentations for a myxoma is very, very interesting. Uh, many patients report having B symptoms, and if you can recall from your haematology, B symptoms are quite often fever, chills and sweats. One of the worst symptoms and complications of the myxoma is that part of this pedunculated tumour can break off and embolize. And of course, if it's in the left atrium, then that's then going to join the systemic circulation, can go up the internal carotids and can cause a stroke. Also, because of its positioning near the foramen ovale, and if it gets big enough, it can kind of tug on the mitral valve uh, and it can prevent the mitral valve from closing properly. So it can form a mitral valve regurgitation and consequently cause a heart failure. And a very hot topic for board exams is that the myxoma can actually sit on top of the mitral valve and cause an obstruction. And this is described as a ball in a valve. And this can cause outflow obstruction, can cause syncope and even death. And this is the most common cause of death and is quite often presented in USMLE questions. On auscultation, you can quite often hear this early diastolic plopping. This is quite a, a buzzword for board, board questions uh, and often a rumble following it at the apex. But just if you can remember the early diastolic plopping sound, that should be enough to remember. And one final clinical correlation with the myxoma is that less than 10% of cases are linked to a very rare disease called Carney complex, where patients have systemic myxomas in the heart, but also on the skin as well. And even though it is very rare, I was actually in the hospital about two months ago, uh, and one of the patients actually had Carney complex and presented with two myxomas in the left atrium. So now we're going to move on to the rhabdomyoma, which is what I've already said is more common in uh, young adults and in infants. 
So the rhabdomyoma is a primary benign tumor of striated muscle cells. So this is actually a tumor from the cardiac myocytes. And these are normally found within the ventricular wall or within the ventricular chamber, not in the atrium like the myxoma. And even though they're normally sharply defined, they're not normally encapsulated. And this makes sense because they've come from the actual heart muscle why would they need to be encapsulated from it? And they're normally yellowish or tannish and normally quite big. In fact, many infants that have had the rhabdomyoma prenatally can even have had the rhabdomyoma spotted when doing prenatal imaging. Microscopically, what we would see is myocytes, but these myocytes are not nicely arranged like you would normally see on normal cardiac histology but rather more disorganized. And the cells have characteristically large vacuoles. And these vacuoles are normally containing glycogen. And almost a pathognomic finding histologically is these things called spider cells, which are these eosinophilic cytoplasmic bands that link from the nucleus to the side of the cell. I would search up an image of these because they're quite easy to remember. So as we've already said, this is mainly seen in younger people. So there would be a child or an infant that would present. And although a lot of these are asymptomatic and many even regress with time, patients can present with congestive heart failure. Of course, the heart is not acting as it should be because you've got a large sort of mass inside its walls. And it can also cause an outflow obstruction i.e. if the tumour is bulging out and preventing blood from the left ventricle to reach up out into the aorta, this can actually cause syncope. Probably one of the most important facts about rhabdomyomas and very, very high yield on board exams is its close association with tuberous sclerosis. Now, you probably know a lot about tubular sclerosis. It's an autosomal dominant disorder characterized by mutations in harmatin and tuberin and you get many many different signs and symptoms from this disease such as facial angiofibromas, cortical tubers, ash leaf spots, shagreen patches. You also see a cardiac rhabdomyoma and about 90% of cardiac rhabdomyomas are seen with tubular sclerosis. So a typical USMLE question could be to diagnose tubular sclerosis from a stem and then identify what kind of tumour in the heart may be associated with it. And lastly, we're moving now on to the fibroma, which is actually the second most common in uh, adolescents and young adults, but is overall the third most common. And the clue's kind of in the name with this one. It's a tumour made of connective tissue and fibroblasts and like the rhabdomyoma is mainly in the ventricles. Most cases are sporadic, unlike rhabdomyomas, which are mainly seen with tubular sclerosis. And the fibroma does not readily regress like the rhabdomyoma. On a macroscopic appearance, they are normally more white than the rhabdomyoma, and they even resemble uterine uh, lyomyomas or fibroids because it's essentially very similar tissue and it's normally seen as a sharply demarked whitish mass uh, as a solitary lesion in the IV septum or even in the free wall of the left or right ventricles and of course microscopically you'll be seeing collagen and different collagenous fibers uh, and areas of fibroblastic proliferation but these details really are not high yield for board questions. Even though most cases are sporadic, uh, about 5% of cases are related to Gorlin syndrome. And Gorlin syndrome is characterized by basal cell skin cancers all over your skin. And like rhabdomyomas, patients can present with heart failure, arrhythmias, and even an outflow obstruction and sudden death. And just to finish, just to briefly mention the metastatic tumors to the heart, uh, these are more common, as I said, than primary cancers of the heart. And it's most commonly from the lung, the breast, melanomas and lymphomas. 
and metastatic tumours to the heart often involve the pericardium, and these can commonly cause pericardial effusions. So, a quick question. A transesophageal echocardiogram is performed on a 48-year-old man. He originally presented with fever and chills and is recently experiencing some shortness of breath. The transesophageal echocardiogram reveals a pedunculated mass in the left atrium. What is your most likely diagnosis? And describe some of the histological features. So yep, yeah, this is a myxoma because it's in the left atrium. He's also an older patient as well. He presented with some B symptoms and there was potential signs of mitral valve regurgitation and heart failure causing a pulmonary edema. Microscopically, as we discussed, you can see mesenchyme, even thrombus areas, but it's mainly mucopolysaccharides. And you may even see some of those lipidic cells. And one more question. A five-month-year-old boy passes away after sudden obstruction of flow over the valves. Biopsy of the heart reveals myocytes with large vacuoles and areas of spider cells. An MRI two months prior to the baby's death revealed cortical tubers. What diagnosis does this patient most likely have? And name some other clinical findings that may be associated with this disease. So this baby likely had a rhabdomyoma because of the ventricular outflow obstruction and also the histology of the spider cells and the myocytes with high amount of glycogen forming vacuoles. And the cortical tubers alongside this signified the patient likely had tuberous sclerosis. Some other findings could be angiofibromas, ash leaf spots, shagreen patches, uncle fibromas, and I'm sure you can name many more. That's everything from me. Thank you very much.